What is up guys, Rules for Rebels here, and in today's video, I wanted to show you guys how to upload a shirt onto Amazon Merch. So I know some of you guys are going to think this is really basic, I mean it's literally as simple as clicking upload, selecting your design, and then going through and putting in your title, bullet points, and description. In this video, I will be giving you guys a little bit of guidance on how I do descriptions and bullet points. I'll also be showing you how to upload shirts. I'm not going to show you guys how to actually design shirts. Uh, I've shown that in a previous video. I will link to it in the description box below. Um, so if you want to know how to make a video with no graphic design skills, I will link to that. I will make some more videos in the future about that. As far as how we're going to do our keyword research and stuff, I use a program called Merch Informer. It's sort of like a Terrapeak for jungle, like, it's sort of like a Jungle Scout or a Terrapeak or a Unicorn Smasher but specifically designed for merch. They do have a free trial, so I will link to that in the description box below. But in this video, we're mainly going to be showing you how to upload a design as well as uh, how to do your bullet points and description and, and, you know, do you want a sample or do you want the shirt to go live, etc. Um, and the reason for this video, I think a lot of people have used Teespring before they've actually used merch. And Teespring has like a text editor, meaning you're going to see a picture of a t-shirt like this. And there's going to be a button right here that says font. And you can click it and you can pick the font you use. And then you could write right on a t-shirt like bacon is cool. Um, and then they'll have some, some clip art here if you click images. And you could drag over pictures of bacon. Um, Amazon Merch does not, you know, it's not a text editor, it's not a design editor, um, it's not a template editor. You are going to need to bring your own designs that you've already created over here. You can make them in Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, GIMP. Those are a little bit more complicated if you don't know design skills. Um, for most of you guys who are absolute beginners, you're probably going to want to either go to Fiverr or use the Canva method that I showed in another video. Um, if we click templates here, um, you're going to see a template, but it, you know, this is probably going to be confusing to you. So what kind of inspired me to make this video, I was watching an interview with uh, Glenn from Hustler Hacks. Um, he's a huge merch designer, which I actually didn't even know until the other day when I watched that video. And he was doing an interview with Reezy Resells and one of Reezy Resells' friends. Um, and she was, you know, kind of mentioned how when she first got on merch, she was really confused, like, you know, where do I click? Well, like, there's no text editor, what's going on here? So in this video, I'm going to show you, like, how to upload a t-shirt, how to make your title, bullet points, brand name, etc. So we'll get started right now. First, I'm going to decide if I want my design on the front or the back or the front and back. I'm just going to do the front. So what I'm going to do here is click upload. And here's some designs that I have ready to be uploaded. Now, the reason that looks like the South Side Irish one is blank is because your designs have to be on a clear background. Now, again, in the other video that I'm going to post in the description, I show you guys how to make a clear background. Um, but with a clear background, basically, that's why it looks blank until I hover over it. Um, here's some shirts. I have a couple of these up already. I have the Summer Sucks Up. I have Yum Up. Uh, today, we're going to be doing this bacon shirt. So I think this is bacon since the 17th century, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah company since 1982, you know, kind of going with that thing with a picture of bacon. So I'm going to click the picture and it's going to say success. And it may take a second, especially since I'm running a screen recorder and uploading it. Um, it may take a second here while it uploads. So yeah, I'm going to pause the video so you guys don't have to sit here and listen to me hum. Okay, so a couple seconds passed, didn't take long at all, and my design is here, right? So we can see, like, is it towards the top of the chest? This is maybe a little bit lower than I might ideally like it. Typically, I like to raise my t-shirts up to about this point, but I think this is going to be good. So bacon, since the 17th century, a uh, picture of bacon, the word bacon, kind of a cool little logo there. If I wanted to do a back of the shirt, I could click back. We are just going to be doing the front today. So I'm going to click Save Selection and Continue. Now we have two choices. We can do either an Anvil Relax shirt or we can do a premium brand. Now Anvil is a cheaper quality shirt. It's not terrible, but it's a cheaper quality and they're relaxed fit, kind of like relaxed fit jeans. So this is going to be a boxier type t-shirt. It's not going to be a form fitting t-shirt like an American Apparel. It's going to be a boxier type t-shirt. Now one other thing I want to mention, uh, if you watch my videos, you probably saw this the other day, but Amazon is no longer using American Apparel as they have gone bankrupt or out of business. Uh, so now they're going to be using uh, Bella and Bella Plus Canvas. Uh, they don't say what that's what it is, but that's what the premium version is. So with an Anvil, if we're priced at $19.95, the base price of the shirt is $12.80, and the estimated royalty is going to be $7.19. Um, with a premium shirt, we're going to be giving people a higher quality shirt, um, but at $19.99, the base price is $14.30, and we're only going to be making $5.69. So 
two schools of thought here. Some people prefer the boxy type shirts. I think of boxy type shirts as being more of like a sleep shirt, whereas I think of like the American Apparel or the Bella and Canvas as being more of a form-fitting shirt um, and more of a stylish shirt. It's also better quality. It's a little bit softer. So I would prefer to take a smaller royalty and give people a quality shirt because at the end of the day, if you buy my shirt and your friends like it, uh, they'll probably go out and buy some. Whereas if it's like a boxy, unfashionable or... Um, whatever shirt, you know, people may not buy it. Amazon also recently added a bunch of new shirt colors. Um, I forget which ones are actually, oh, I think it's kind of the, like the Heather colors are the new colors. Um, I really like the charcoals. I think they can look really sharp. Um, as you can see here, I can't scroll over with you guys still seeing the design, but the way that I created the clear background, I was a little bit sloppy, so you can kind of see white under the bacon. So it doesn't look terrible, but I may want to try to focus on lighter shirts. But again, you know, I typically go with the premium shirts. Uh, men and women is automatically checked. I'm not going to check youth. Um, and we can kind of see what our shirt's going to look like um, with different colors. Amazon recommends only doing three colors. I think when you give people too many choices, they wind up buying nothing. So I'm going to go with like a white, a gray. I like the asphalt, don't like red. Slate is kind of cool, asphalt. So we'll, we'll go with those. I guess I can only, are they only gonna let me, yeah, I guess they're only gonna let me pick, oh, I, never mind, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I got my five colors picked. One weird thing, if any of you guys know this, uh, I mean, it's probably not that hard to figure out, but your shirt is gonna only display um, by default in one of these colors. Um, so I think mine's on charcoal now. I have never really figured out like, is it the last box? I think the last box you check is what what color the t-shirt's gonna be on the actual Amazon listing. Now, obviously people can scroll across and see what it looks like in different colors, but whatever the best color is, is the one that you want your t-shirt to kind of be featured with. So we, we've picked a premium brand. Uh, we selected our t-shirt colors. Next, we got to come up with a price point. So again, $19.95 is kind of the base price. It leaves you a pretty nice commission. Unless you have like a really unique shirt, unless there's not a lot of competition, I would typically consider lowering this price. A lot of people are going to tell you to stay around 20 bucks because, oh, who wants a $2 commission? I would rather sell more shirts and make a little bit less and get my shirt ranked uh, well uh, to where it's going to sell more even as opposed to being priced higher and getting less sales. So we can kind of play around like we price it at not 16 cents. If we price it at $16, we're going to have a commission of $230. If we price it at $15, $145. If we price it at $17, we're going to make $315. So I'm going to price mine at $16.95. It's going to leave me with a commission of $311, which isn't terrible. So we are going to click uh, Save and Continue. And now we're taken to the listing page. So we have to create a brand name. This is the name of your t-shirt and will be listed by being buy on the product page. We recommend using your brand name, not your company, as brand names are queued in search. So you can make up anything you want. You don't have to have an LLC. You don't have to have anything trademarked. Just create a brand. Some people will use the same brand for everything. However, you somewhat make it easy for people to copy your designs because if somebody thinks you have cool designs and they want to copy you, they can click your brand name and see every t-shirt you have. So I do have some t-shirts called Rules for Rebels, but typically I'll do random brands. So, um, Let's see, what could we do? We could do something like uh, bacon. I love my bacon. Um, you know, kind of stupid. I, I really want to try to put the keyword in the brand name if possible. Um, you know, I'm, I'm taking it. Who doesn't love bacon is going to be our brand name. Uh, the product is bacon since the... 17th century bacon lovers fitted I will say t-shirt so, you know you try to use as much of the space as possible the more keywords you can get in here uh, the better um, fitted bacon lovers uh, foodie shirt so words that I'm going to want to include in here, I think, would be things like foodie, because, you know, foodie people, um, cooks, recipe, um, you know, yum, tasty, like anything bacon related. And even if something's not bacon related, like 
people who are into bacon, what else are they into? Um, that, that's kind of a hard one. Like if I were doing something like succulents, I may want to also include the term cacti or cactus because people who grow cactuses often grow succulents and vice versa. So every keyword doesn't have to be about bacon. It can be things that people who like bacon might like as well. So we're going to do like a uh, great shirt for bacon lovers, chefs, right? Because chefs deal with bacon, cook with bacon, like food, bacon lovers, chefs, foodies and meat lovers. Um, great gift item. Some people will search for gift stuff, so we're gonna try to get the word gift item in there. What you don't wanna do is just be like bacon, ham, turkey, steak, meat. Uh, sometimes your design will be taken down for that. The stuff that's automatically included in your listing is gonna be imported, 100% cotton, machine wash, etc. cetera. Um, so let's see. Um, I'm not putting a ton of thought into this. Normally I would go into merch, over to Merch Informer and try to find some good keywords and things like that. I'm kind of just going off the top of the head right now. Um, I tend to kind of do like long run on sentences, trying to include as many keywords as possible while still keeping things readable. So the next line might be, uh, anyone who loves grilling, steaks, barbecue, barbecues, summertime and bacon will love this shirt. Yum. Um, again, kind of kind of stupid. Um, I used to try to do product descriptions. Sometimes I would just copy and paste bullet points into the product descriptions. I heard Glenn from Hustler Hacks say that he leaves this alone. Technically, both of these are optional. Um, typically, I would say you want to fill out everything possible. Um, I don't know. Ever since hearing Glenn from Hustler Hacks say he doesn't do the product description, I, I've kind of followed his lead. Um, I may start doing them, but you know, I have a hard time writing copy for this type of stuff. So for this uh, shirt, we're just going to leave it blank. And literally the next step is just going to click save selection and continue. Okay, so here's basically what the product details page is going to look like. You know, they're not showing us their size chart and stuff like that. We don't need to see that. But if we wanted to edit the price, we can edit the price. If we want to edit the title, we can edit the title, edit the bullet points, etc. But here's what our shirt's going to look like. Um, you know, here's the colors that it's going to come in. Um, here's what I wrote for the bullet points, and then they're automatically going to include this shirt is made of lightweight, fine jersey fabric, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't have a product description. If I wanted to, I could add one. So we can save it as a draft if we want to come back and work on it later. If we want to order a sample for ourselves to see what the shirt looks like, we can click submit and it's not going to go live. Only people with the URL. If you want to share the URL with some friends or if you wanted to make a shirt just for friends but not have it go public, you could do this. Now, one thing I'm not sure about, like Amazon doesn't want like marijuana related shirts and things like that on the platform. One hack that I'm not going to try it, I don't want to put my account at risk, but potentially, like if I wanted to sell my Kush shirt, which was removed, I potentially think I may be able to do a sample and then just share the direct link with people who want to buy. But again, I'm not going to play around with that. So what I pretty much always do is public. An Amazon product page will be created. Customers will be able to search and find your shirt on Amazon. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. We're going to get a 311 royalty. Again, title, price our bullet points, we're gonna make it go public and I am gonna click submit product right now. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And that's it guys, uh, your submission is under review for compliance with our policies before publishing. And again, don't be scared if you see this black, uh, this is a clear background, which is why you can't see the font or anything. Basically, all this black area um, is just going to be the color of the t-shirt. So we're going to have our text and the bacon. It's not, you know, this isn't your design. Don't get freaked out. Uh, sample your product, blah, blah, blah. Um, see, on this account, I only got like 17 shirts live right now. Um, but yeah, this shirt is live. I'll get an email probably later in the day or tomorrow. Um, you know, as soon as uh, this shirt actually is officially live. Um, they have to review it. Sometimes it's within a matter of minutes or hours. Other times it might take a day or two. Um, this shirt shouldn't have any compliance policies or trademark violations. So it should go live and then it will show up on my dashboard as being a live shirt. So um, again, guys, kind of straightforward stuff here. Um, this is how you upload an Amazon shirt. Uh, 
again, as I've said it a couple times, but I'll link in the description box below to how, my video on how to make a shirt for those of you who know nothing about graphic design. I'm not really great with design myself. I focus mainly on like plain text shirts or text in an image. I think the name of the game is get as many shirts up as quickly as possible as you can. If you're allowed to upload two shirts a day, make sure you're uploading two shirts a day. Um, what I'll normally do is sit down in 10 or 15 minutes, I can normally crank out I don't know, a dozen shirts and then I'll put them in a folder and then every day I got a couple of shirts that I can upload and I'm going to make an effort to like once a day at least crank out a couple of shirts. Simple text shirts can be made really, really quickly um, and I think volume is the name of the game. You're also going to figure out what sells and what doesn't a lot more quickly. So that's my video, guys. That is how to upload a shirt. If you have any questions, comments, uh, you know, if there's anything you're confused by, if you have any hacks or tricks that you want to share with people, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Check back for more videos, and uh, I will catch you guys on the next one.